Welcome everyone. I'm Fred Kaiser and I'm your host at the Fast Team National Resource Center and FA Production Studios in this wonderful complex of sun and fun here in Lakeland, Florida. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. In case you might have any of these little things right here, you might want to turn them off for me, okay? If any of them go off during the uh, presentation, then we'll have you come up here and give us maybe a 10 minute speech on aerodynamics or something simple. And the other thing is in the case we need to evacuate the building for any reason, you'll hear someone shout, Easy Victor. All right, and if you do hear them terms, please exit through the door you came through. Kind of stand outside so we can get a head count to make sure everybody's gotten outside of their building. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Our next presenter is probably one of the most articulate, fun to be around, and knowledgeable men I've ever had a chance to work with. His name is Brian Neville, and he's our, our program outreach manager for the uh, uh, FASafety.gov. And he is incredibly knowledgeable, and the next presentation will probably just uh, uh, blow you away. Anyway, a little bit about Brian. He currently lives in Utah, has three children, and of course, like most of us who have children, we keep the people, our, our kids in our wallet, and. Unfortunately, that's the only thing we have. We don't have any money anymore. But, uh, you know, Brian has a passion for aviation safety. Brian fully believes, like a lot of us do, that our future of aviation lies in the hands of our flight instructors. And to that end, that's, that has become his goal. He's done presentations for flight instructors. And through FASafety.gov, this is really becoming an outreach tool in his hands. Uh, Brian holds an ATP certificate, single and multi-engine and airplanes, hot air balloon rating. He has a master's degree in business administration. My gosh, are we so lucky on the FAST team to have him. His presentation today is going to deal with your new AMT awards program. <clears throat> and without any further delay, I'm going to introduce Mr. Brian Neville. Thank you. Now, I do want to correct Fred in one, one location. My other four children would be disappointed to learn that I only have three. <laughs> I do, in fact, have seven children. And uh, the three that he was referring to are those that are uh, pretty much at home attending college. So that's why I have photos where I used to have money. Uh, it's unbelievably expensive these days. The AMT Awards Program is something that has been in place for many years, and we now are, are pleased to announce that we're going to host the AMT Awards Program on FAAsafety.gov. This is uh, not new to those of you in the uh, aviation industry to learn that the FAA is moving more and more toward computerized programs, computerized information. and this and another announcement that I'm going to make during the process of my presentation today uh, is just another part of our outreach to a large community. Uh, we know that everyone doesn't have a computer. We know that every library has a computer. So computers are available to everyone. We are not going to forget those who do not have a computer or actually there are many who prefer not to use computers but that's okay. We're going to talk today about the Aviation Maintenance Technician Awards Program. This is a program that's been in place and we're going to host it on FAAsafety.gov. The other things that we do at FAAsafety.gov are very important, especially to those pilots who are registered on FAAsafety.gov. And of course now we're going to invite aviation maintenance technicians to register on uh, FAAsafety.gov as well. Uh, the AMT awards program is one reason to do that. The other reason in the announcement I'm making today is that the Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award will now be hosted on FAAsafety.gov. 
And that changeover should actually take place about noon today, Eastern Time. So sometime during my presentation, um, I'm hoping that uh, the Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award program will show up on FAASafety.gov. So that's exciting. Many of you know that FAASafety.gov also includes uh, notices and uh, events, uh, online training. We have many online courses. Uh, I'm going to mention that we'd like to have more and we're searching for more. And uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, a group is meeting and we're going to review our latest online course. Hopefully, we'll have it uh, up on FAASafety.gov sometime this week while we're here at Sun and Fun. We also provide links to safety information from a variety of sources. Uh, we're going to improve that presentation, by the way, sometime in the next week or two. We're going to change the way that shows up on FAASafety.gov to make it much easier for pilots and mechanics to find useful information to help them in their work uh, promoting safety as well as accomplishing their, their basic jobs. Of course, we host the WINGS Pilot Proficiency Program and, as I said, now the AMT Awards Program. It's been around for a while. Can someone look at this picture and tell me what they see? Do you see anything interesting about that aircraft? It turns out that a mechanic neglected to do something. The airplane took off and left one very important piece on the ground. It actually left the aircraft. You probably noticed that the left main gear is missing, the main wheel. It left the aircraft as the airplane departed the runway. Well. What do we hope to achieve in the AMT Awards program? That's a question I want to answer. And also, who is our primary target? Who do we really want to participate in this program? The first question is answered with our FAST team mission. You can see here that our, our assignment, our goal, is to improve the nation's aviation accident rate. We want that trend line to keep going down. In addition, the people that we think can help us do that are AMTs who receive or promote and foster initial and recurrent training. So those are the folks that we hope to address in, with the AMT Awards program. Now, 2008 was the last year that we used paper applications. And in that program, there were five levels for individuals and two levels for companies. And those were all described in the advisory circular 6525D. Well, in 2009, starting in 2009, individual AMTs will be able to earn one of three awards, a bronze, a silver, or a gold award. And employers will continue to be able to earn a, a gold award or a diamond award. And these will be explained in the new advisory circular, AC 65-25E, which should be available, and we have our fingers crossed, and you all know how it works in the FAA. We make promises, but we never tell you which year, right? Well, we really do hope that that advisory circular is available for the general public sometime in May. Now, it might be June, but we're hoping for May, so that's our goal anyway. And it will describe the AMT program. Now, the bronze award that I referred to as one of the individual awards will require 12 hours of training. The silver award, 40 hours. And the gold award, 80 hours of training plus a three-credit college course. In addition to those requirements, every level will require completion of an online core course. Uh, right now, we're emphasizing failure to follow procedures. So you'll see that phrase being addressed more and more often. Many of the accidents that occur that can be attributed to maintenance individuals occur because they have failed to follow procedures, already established, already proven procedures and the failure to follow those have contributed to incidents and accidents. AMT employers will have 
the two levels. The gold award requires 50% of their eligible employees to earn an AMT certificate of training. The diamond award requires 100% participation of eligible employees. Now here's kind of a timeline. This is when training can take place that can apply to the AMT awards program. So in 2009, for example, January through December, ah, oh, that's when you can earn training that applies to the 2009 award. Once we roll over into January of 2010, now the training acquired then only applies to 2010. So there's a full 12 months to earn AMT training for a particular year, so that's good. Here's how we continue then. Mechanics and other aviation technicians can enter the training they receive in a 13-month period. So mechanics can enter training January through December and into through the end of January of the following year. Okay, now that's the training. We're also working on, let me preface this by saying we're working on a process where some companies have large numbers of maintenance technicians that participate and we're, help, we're hoping to help them upload the training that takes place all at one time. We call that a bulk upload of training. So we hope to have a procedure in place that will allow that to happen. Right now, individuals have to do it, but we're going to introduce that other process very soon. Now, individual AMTs have the entire month of January to claim their award for the previous year. They can claim the award as soon as they wish. So they can claim the bronze award, but then they're done. The system is designed so that once an award is claimed, the AMT tells us by doing so that they are finished with their training for that year. So we recommend that AMTs wait till the end of the year and really into January of the next year to enter their training. And I'm going to show you in a little bit that we, we're even going to provide a, a blank form to enable that to be, to be done. Now, employers can claim their award after the individual AMTs have claimed their award. So that means February of the following year is when the employers will claim their award. So where do we start? Well, faasafety.gov, everyone will have to be registered. Now, I do get the, the question, why do we have to register on faasafety.gov? And the answer to that is, we need to keep track of your record so that if there's ever a question, did you earn the award, we have a record that can be specifically tied to an individual that shows what their achievements have been. So that's the reason for registering on FAAsafety.gov. Now let me show you how we're going to do that. Here we have a link that's labeled Maintenance Hanger. And that is the entry, that's the portal to the AMT Awards Program and other information about uh, maintenance issues, and I'm going to go quickly through those links. Here's the first one, AMT information. You can see that after you click on the link AMT information, this page opens up, and it addresses four other areas. One, the first link is where you can actually sign up on fasafety.gov for the AMT Awards Program. So there's two steps. First, you register on fasafety.gov, and then you enroll in the awards program. In addition, well, let me show you what that looks like. You can enroll as an individual AMT, and then, of course, employers can enroll as an employer of AMTs. So that's how that works. The AMT IA toolbox is a list of links that guides individuals to resources for mechanics. 
Actually, I'm going to change that word mechanic, assuming that Phil Randall gives permission. It's not just for mechanics, it's for any aviation maintenance technician. So if you're involved in avionics, if you're a repairman, there will also be links here that you can use to find additional information that can help you in your job. Now this is the My AMT page. You'll see there are a lot of things on this page. Up in the upper left-hand corner is kind of a summary. You can see this individual has earned the Bronze Award because they completed 27 training hours. Shows that it's completed. The college course is complete because it's only required at the, uh, the third level. Well, here's the airman profile that we're going to ask AMTs to complete. Uh, we want to know what your interest level is. Are you interested in uh, what parachute riggers do, for example? We'd like you to check that box. And then when you search for activities, if the system works as we've designed it, you'll be able to find activities that pertain directly to that interest subject. And I always want to save things. I want to point that out, that after you put the check mark in one of these boxes, then click the Save box so that it gets saved to your profile. Now, here's the IA training and seminar search. Notice that you can search by zip code and radius, a state, a region, a keyword, an airport. At some point, we're actually in this little area right down here below airport, we're going to add a date search. So that if, if you know you're going to be in a certain place at a certain time, you can actually search to see if there's an, an event or activity that will be happening while you're there. Or if, you, if you're just going to stay home and you want to know if something's happening in July when you're going to be on vacation, uh, then you'll be able to make that search. So that's a, that's a feature that we're going to add here in the very near future. You can enter duplicate. You can enter, for example, here in this example, keyword was uh, entered plus a region. Uh, many people who work with the FAA in the industry, they know which region they're in, and so they can, they can select that. Now, this is a list of training providers that we have on FAAsafety.gov. Uh, this is an initial effort to show all of the courses that are approved for IA renewal. It's in the beginning stages. There are, as you can see here, 1,301 uh, courses there now. Uh, this is phase one of this program, this subsystem. We're going to improve that in the near future, but it's usable right now. You can actually find a course, click on the link, and discover what it's all about. We also have a help page, and you can see there that there's information about the AMT Awards Program, uh, general training information. Uh, there's information about uh, that individual AMTs can look at, and then a page for AMT employers. And again, this is an area where there's, there's material there now, and we're, we're going to be able to add to it on a, on a regular basis. So we're excited about that. Now, a little bit more explanation about the My AMT page. There are lots of ways to find things. For example, here we can see that to find the core course, we can click on the green button. We can click on the link that says Core Training Courses. Or we can go up to the link that says Learning Center. In fact, we can come over to this Learning Center as well and look and search for a core course or any other course that applies to AMTs. Once you get to a course, there'll be an enroll button. For example, here we have failure to follow procedures during inspections. And there's the enroll button. And now you can see that core course has changed color. It's incomplete. You're enrolled for it, but it's incomplete. So we'll keep track of these things for you. As a matter of fact, when you complete the course, automatic credit will be posted to your account. You don't have to worry about that at all. 
Now, other training that's not hosted on FAAsafety.gov will need to be entered manually. Now, earlier I referred to the feature that we're going to introduce later this year, which is going to allow uh, a bulk upload of training. Right now, individual training can be entered. Here's how that's done. Notice that there's a tab for training and there's a tab for college credit. So when you're ready to enter your college credit that's required for the highest level, you click on this tab, enter college credit, but the individual training effort is entered here. Notice that it's very simple. You enter a date, a course title, the provider who gave the training, and the applicable training hours. Here's a form that's available on FAAsafety.gov. We know that some individuals will come to the previous page, enter their training immediately. Other individuals will wait until yeah, it's convenient for them. So here's a form where individual training received can be recorded. Uh, we just are looking at the top part of this form. It's available on FAAsafety.gov. There's a link right, on the, uh, right in the uh, maintenance hangar area, so you don't have to go searching for it. Notice it's very simple. It's just a name, presenter's name, date, and number of hours. All right, here's what the college credit page looks like. The additional item on the college credit page is we're asking you to upload a document that indicates the training that you received. So it might be a diploma, a certificate, uh, something like that. Okay, so that's the, that's the only difference there. There'll always be an opportunity to look back and look currently at the training hours that you've entered as an AMT so that you can always have a record of the training. So that's part of uh, FAAsafety.gov. And it, it's a little challenging to see in this presentation, but when you see it on the computer screen, you'll note that the colors around this presentation will change. It's more evident here in the silver area. Notice that it's bright silver here and a dull silver here. And down here it says like a uh, Hobbs meter, it gives you the number of hours. 27, that ref is reflected here, 27. It's reflected up here, 27. Shows that the core training course is still required. It's yellow, meaning it's uh, started but not completed. And the college credit is red, meaning that it's not entered yet. So there's a lot of information on this page that will help AMTs understand where they are and what they uh, still need to accomplish to achieve their goals. Talked about those things. Core course. Here's the enrollment button. Uh, by the way, it's a good thing to mention that because we know that some individuals have already completed the failure to follow procedures inspections course, the decision was made that you will not have to repeat it in 2009. You will receive automatic credit when this program goes online. We give you reminders on your MyMT page. It says, don't forget to claim your award during January 2009. We want everyone to remember that it's OK to enter all of your training. But if you don't claim your award, the assumption is made that you're not ready to claim your award yet. So there's been some di little discussion about, should we automate that? That discussion is still taking place. Uh, we don't want to presume something that may or may not be correct. But we are looking at that. You know, something like a January 31st at midnight, boom, whatever's there is uh, checked and double checked and, and credit is assigned if it's appropriate. But that is a feature that's down the road just a little bit. All right, there's the button that says claim my AMT award. It shows up as soon as you have an award level. When you click that, a message comes up that says, you may earn only one AM, AMT award each year. So please ensure that you have recorded all of your eligible training before claiming your award. And yes, I see the typo there. We'll get that fixed. Click, o to, click OK to continue claiming your award or cancel to withdraw your request, which means that you 
probably will enter additional training. All right, so after the warning, uh, this page shows up. You now have the bronze award. The award year is indicated. The date is indicated. And you can download the certificate. It'll show up on your screen, and then you can print it. If you have a color printer, that'll look very nice. And some employers we know will want to receive a copy of that certificate for their records, and so you're able to email your employer or anyone else, actually, by clicking this link, which will open the email system that's on your individual computer. So that's a nice, uh, t nice touch. Here's what it looks like. Here's the bronze award. It's actually a fairly simple certificate, but it's complete. Uh, I think it's attractive. It's got that uh, background of the uh, AMT awards program. And of course, we hope that when the system is launched that everybody's name doesn't turn out to be test AMT1. The individual's name should show up there. Well, all right. So here's the email subsystem. You enter the name of the person you want to send it to and their email address. Pretty simple. Someone has asked us if we should include an employer drop-down list. Uh, it turns out that uh, we're about 50-50 split on that. We actually did a beta test with the industry. and About half of those said, yeah, we'd love to have that so we don't have, don't have to have individuals look for our name and misspell it. But the other half said, well, then there's going to be a very long list because all of the employers and people will not search properly. And if there's two names that are very similar, they may click on the wrong name. So again, this is a feature we're exploring. We don't know quite where we're going to go there yet. Uh, but it's a possibility. And again, training history now will show up. Um, another feature that is not in the initial launch, but we hope to include in phase two, will be a printer-friendly option to print this page. As many of you who are computer literate are aware, you can click on the print function on your browser, and it may or may not work properly uh, with a web page. So we think we're going to develop a printer-friendly, a print-friendly uh, option, and then it'll print properly. Note that the year is always indicated in the summary box, and it's always indicated in your history and your award history, and. The FAA safety team has dis held discussions with PAMA, SAE Institute, and they're going to provide a yearly AMT award decal. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, this is another way that industry members can be involved by providing these uh, nifty little things for the people who accomplish their goals. Now, what about employers? Employers are a little bit more challenging because there are a lot of things that can happen here. For example, an individual aviation maintenance technician may be working out of the back of their truck at a small airport on their own. And so they are an AMT, but they're also an employer. So now how are we going to have them register on FAAsafety.gov. Well, if that link is clicked, a message comes up that says this. If you are logged in to your personal FAAsafety.gov account, please be aware that enrolling as an AMT employer will tie that employer to this account. You may want to create a new FAAsafety.gov account to use for managing your AMT employer account. So click OK to proceed and cancel to stop that. Well, here's what we've discovered. It's possible for a uh, director of maintenance to be working for a medium-sized company, and he's the registered employer association so that he can enter the individual AMT, or he can uh, look at the individual AMT information. But now what if he gets a job offer from a larger company and he moves on? 
Well, now he's still associated with that other company. So there are two ways to handle that. One is, as this note says, the company may want to have an individual email account that is used by whoever is in that position to manage the AMT awards program for the employer. The other method is, if they choose to use the individual AMT, uh, uh, AMT's account, they notify the administrator of FAAsafety.gov. And then we would disassociate that individual from the account and then associate another individual, if that was the company's desire. So there's two ways to do that. We're going to leave it to the individual AMT because we understand the range of company size can literally be three employees for an AMT awards program, two thousands of AMT employees. And so that possibility exists. Now, here's a simple employer application. Notice it really is simple. I'll just fill in a couple of boxes here. When you get to the employment type, we have put in a drop-down box. A couple reasons for that. One is some individual employers may not really fit in the category where they have a maintenance certificate, and what's called an air agency certificate. And so they need to choose probably the one that says FBO or non-certificated maintenance shop or independent. But those that do hold an air agency certificate can click on the appropriate uh, indication here in this drop-down box. For example, a part 145 repair station, just for our example here today. Notice that you enter a certificate designator. In this case, it's G-A-E-R. And there are 42 eligible employer, employees. Then, of course, the individual contact information is completed. Well, what happens if somebody else has already entered G-A-E-R when you click Submit? You get this message that pops up. It says, an employer with a certificate designator, G-A-E-R, is already enrolled. And that's because the industry beta test, those folks came back to us and said, you know, we have 42 employees, for example. We don't want all of those people thinking that they can enroll as an employer and manage our account. We want to say who does that. And so we're, we're maintaining that one person can do that. One account can do that. Now, it's up to the employer whether or not they allow additional individuals to know that login information and the password. And that's OK with us. But then the employer is controlling that. All right, so when it is complete, there's a green banner that says, it's been saved. Welcome to your profile page. And then we come back, my, MT, my AMT employer profile, and here it is. On this page, there are a couple of links. One is Claim the Employer AMT Award. Click that link. Message comes up. If your AMT employer information is current, please click OK to continue. Otherwise, click Cancel. Well, some of you know that in the AMT Awards program, it requires a minimum of three employees to participate in the program. And then you'll note that percentages were necessary to achieve one of the two levels as an employer. So the only way to know if you re, uh, have achieved 50% or 100% is to know who the, or the number of eligible employees. So that's why on this page, we ask for the number of eligible employees. Right there it is. So if that number is correct, great. Just click OK and continue. If that number is not correct, then click Cancel, come down and change it, and then click OK. And that'll update that information. And so there's a brief description again of what the two levels are for an employer. 
could continue once, you, once the employer understands what those are. And now we come back here and there's a read-only box that says, you told us earlier that you had 42 eligible employees. Now you can already see ahead on this screenshot that there's a number of employees that have received an award and the employer can upload that list. That way we can go back at any time and see when they say that there's 22, which earns the 50% level, we can look at this list that's been uploaded and discover that information. All right. We ask them to check a box that says, I confirm the following information, including I have in my possession a copy of each individual employee AMT award certificate. And then this calendar year will change as the year is appropriate. Okay. Here's a case where there's 100%. They're going to load their list. All, all you do is browse and find the list on your individual computer. Click open. It uploads that. Hit confirm and continue. And now we want the employer to confirm the exact spelling of their name. Now, there was a little bit of discussion about this, and the reason we want the employer to tell us what their name is is because occasionally we see misspellings on certificates and documents, so we want to leave it to the employer to tell us how to spell their name. So it gets entered in there, and click continue, and as it says here, this is exactly what will appear on your award. Now that's important for a couple of reasons. I'm going to show you those reasons right now. Okay, so the award application gets processed. Uh, the, the local fast team program manager will be in touch. You can download a certificate of the award. Here's what the diamond award looks like. And again, the employer's name will show up exactly as typed in that previous page. All right. The employer can look at their history. They can always download a certificate if they want. We know that some employers have multiple locations, and they, want, they may want uh, multiple copies of their certificate to display, and that's fine. We will also make a presentation of a very nice plaque. This is what it is proposed to look like. I think it looks pretty sharp. But another reason for the employer to tell us what their name is and how to spell the name. We don't want to make a mistake on a, a rather expensive uh, plaque like this and then be embarrassed when we make the presentation. Now, employers, if they choose, can unenroll from the AMT Awards program. We give that option. And we double check that that's what they want to do. And then it says you've been disassociated with this employer. So now a new person can come along and associate themselves with that employer. We have established a, an email address. And it is simply amt at faasafety.gov. amt at faasafety.gov. And you can forward your questions to that email box. It's live now, even though the system's not live, the subsystem. It will go live as soon as we get the word. But the email box is live. And if, if there are questions that are not answered with the help file that's already under the maintenance hanger, then we'd appreciate receiving the email. And then we can respond to your questions. Well, all right. Uh, that's a quick look at the upcoming AMT Awards program. Now, I'm a kind of a risk-taking person, so I'm going to take just a moment here and say, are there any questions in the crowd that I might have the answer for? Just hold your hand up and a microphone will come around. If not, 
I'm going to attempt, someone may have to help me, I'm going to attempt to go on live internet and find an example of the Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award system. Let's find out if we can do that. In fact, what I may do, just to be sure, I may just go to the beta site because it should be good on the beta site. Let's find out. You all are risk takers, aren't you? We have analyzed the risk and discovered that no one will crash because I go look at this. If I could just figure out how to learn. Right. Oh, I see. It's still working. Here at Sun and Fun this week, there are a lot of people using the internet, so sometimes it's a little slow. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll find out. Looks like we might we might work. I'm waiting for it to load. Oh my, look at all the names. Our beta test site looks exactly like the live site. However, it contains the new features and enhancements that will be launched in the near future. So you may see something here that is different from what is on the live site. Just don't take me to task over that because this is not a public viewable site. Internet is slow. The AMT Awards Program, as I mentioned earlier, something that's been around for a long time and we're excited to host it on FASafety.gov. Looks like I'm in here. So if I go to Awards Programs, click on Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award, this is the information page that shows up. It describes the Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award. It gives you a list uh, or a uh, link that goes out so that you can find an individual Flight Standards District office. It will list the advisory circular that discusses the award. It'll give you a link to go out and find your individual FAST Team program manager. And now, if it works, when I click this link, we'll see a list of the current awardees. And there they are. 1,337 individuals have been awarded the Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award. Again, this is searchable by last name, first name, city, state, or the year received. You'll note that this displays the date received as unknown. It turns out that the database used to collect this information, I'm sorry, the electronic database did not contain the date received. The written, the handwritten, database does contain the date received and so when we electronically load this data loaded this data of course the date wasn't there so it wasn't able so we invite anyone whose name is on this list send us an email at amt.fa or amt.fasafety.gov tell us what your name is and when you received your award 
uh, and we'll put that date in for you. If you click on a link, the name, we present a copy of the, uh, the award itself. Now, this is the beta site, so this is an old award. This is just used for testing purposes. We hope to get a new version of the award certificate when we launch to the live site. But right now, we just wanted something there to make sure it was all going to work. And so that is the Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award, as it will appear, generally speaking, on the live site when it goes live. And we hope it does sometime in May. It might be June, but we hope it goes live in May. All right, are there any questions about that award? Yes. Wait for the microphone and we'll turn the microphone on. We're just waiting for the microphone to go on. Is that microphone switch turned on? Okay. What number is on the microphone? Here we go. Here comes a live mic. All right. Okay, try again. Um, I don't have a question. I just wanted um, to know if you could mention the help desk, uh, help center in the back here for anyone that might be interested in giving comments on uh, wings or fasafety.gov. Oh, all right. Uh, we do want to mention that here at Sun and Fun this week, uh, in fact, through Sunday, we do have uh, a help center for questions and comments that you'd like to make about fasafety.gov, the WINGS program, and now that you've seen the AMT awards program, we welcome comments for that as well. We're especially interested in your comments about how the, the website is working for you, what suggestions you might make to improve it. Uh, I can tell you I'm excited about some of the changes that you're going to see uh, between now and the, uh, the end of summer, we're very excited to have listened to input over the last several months, and we're going to incorporate many of those changes. So we're very excited about that. That help center is just behind the FAA production studios. There's a sign up that says fasafety.gov slash wings help center. And we have individuals there that can address your questions and provide additional information. We also have six computers set up there so that we can specifically look uh, at your account or look at your question or look at uh, what your suggestions might be for the website. So thank you for that observation. Any other questions? Brian, this is Karen Art. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the AMT online award program going, on, going live this today or this the, week? The Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award. You know, I'm, uh, I'm willing to try. Let's find out if it's live right now. This is the beta test site. Uh, I think we can go look. The question, Brian, is whether the beta site will remain live for us to perhaps do presentations back home for a short period. I can tell you that the PowerPoint presentation that I just gave will be available to any FAST team program manager or representative who would like to use it. And later today, we'll upload that. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> oh, I apologize. We'll make that available uh, in some means. Um, Maybe the easiest place to put that PowerPoint presentation is on the representative SharePoint site or on the uh, FAST Team Program Manager SharePoint site or perhaps even loaded on the uh, fasafety.gov site so it's available. Very good, Brian. Just uh, may make that notification to our own people back home. Thank you. All right. Let me... All right. 
Hmm. Uh, Brian, uh, my name is Roger Rowe. I'm a webmaster for a, a flying club about an hour north of here. Uh -huh. First of all, I want to congratulate you on this site. It's very, very well done. I've personally been on it and I'm in the process of taking a course. Some of the uh, minor weak spots in it you've already addressed and uh, appreciate and glad to hear that. What worries me, however, is that I can tell you that about 80% of the people in our club of 130 people have never been on this site and they hardly know it exists. Probably a majority of them don't even know it exists. It seems as though we need an individual that can kind of travel around as guest speaker to flying clubs and make them aware with a presentation like this of this uh, wonderful uh, facility. Uh, the last comment I have has to do with the award program in that you said the, the group uh, that you're associated with is kind of 50-50 decided on whether these, the, the award should be automated. Well, I can tell you that there will be people, not because they're, uh, 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 they don't want to, they just will kind of forget and they just won't at the end of the year uh, press that button and to get their valid award. So. If it's 50% and I count it all, it's now 50.001% in favor of making that automated. All right, let me address a couple of things. One, thank you for your positive comments about the site. I think, I think by the end of summer, uh, maybe a little bit later than end of summer, you all are going to be excited to see the changes that we're going to make to fasafety.gov because we are going to make it even simpler to use. We're going to make it even easier to understand than it is now. The um, AMT Awards Program, one of the key things is that once you sign up for FAAsafety.gov, we can send an email notice and remind you to claim your award, to enter your training. And I think that's something that we definitely need to look at because as you say, especially this first year, People are going to forget the deadlines. People are going to not remember. They're going to be on vacation. They're going to be busy. So that email reminder is going to be very important. So actually, I've already made a, uh, I don't have my PDA on my belt, but it's right there. And so we will accomplish that. So thank you for that observation as well. I did just check the Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award is not quite live, but you know, as soon as I leave this podium, I'll bet I can go make that happen so that it will be live today sometime. Well, thank you very much. That's all that I have. If there are no other questions, I think that I will leave the podium and I trust all of you will enjoy your time here at Sun and Fun. And I understand now that the camera is going up to the roof and there'll be uh, something up there happening. Thank you very much for your participation. Have a great day. Nice job, man. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. I'm going to go make that happen right now.